All right, Matthew 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now this passage is often used to compliment James 2, to say, well, you see, James 2, if you don't have works, you have this dead faith, and this is what these people have here in verse 21, where they say, Lord, Lord, and they, they did call upon the Lord. They did have faith in Jesus, but they didn't have the works because Jesus said, you know, only those that do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, and the rest he's going to say, depart from me, uh, ye that work iniquity. So we see there, you know, if you're in sin, if you're still sinning, then, you know, Jesus is going to turn you away at the day of judgment. You know, and a couple of other things they say about this passage as well, when we read about the straight and the narrow way, they say, well, you know, the, it, they say the, str the gate is straight. So the gate is one, it's Jesus Christ. But then they say the way is narrow. So in order to get to that gate, you have to walk along this narrow way. And that's the narrow way of keeping the commandments and keeping the works. And again, you've got to ask yourself the question, well, if I'm on this narrow way by works, well, how much works do I need to have to make sure I'm on that narrow way? Well, if I have to be perfect to be on that narrow way, then who is on that narrow way? So, how do, so, so the narrow way is not talking about, about our works. Um, another thing that they say is, well, Jesus said here, ye shall know them by their fruits. And he says, a good tree brings forth good fruit, and a bad tree brings forth evil fruit. So they'll say you'll know somebody, whether they're saved or not, by their fruit, and they make this fruit to mean their works. Now that sounds all good and well if you have some works in your life and you say, well, I'm a good tree, I've got some, some works. But the problem is we have sin as well. We have bad fruit in our life. So this verse, if we think it's going to comfort us and give us comfort and say, well, therefore you're saved, that's not what actually this verse will actually do to you if you actually take it to mean that. Because it says, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit in verse 18. So if you're technically a good tree, meaning you're a saved, born-again believer, and meaning you'll know whether or not you're a saved, born-again believer by your fruit, and, that, and meaning you're a good tree, therefore you've got the good fruit, well, then that means you won't have any bad fruit. But we do have bad fruit because the bad tree is there. So if we take this verse to mean, well, a good tree is a believer and a bad tree is an unbeliever. Well, then by this standard, we're all unbelievers because we all have bad fruit. So isn't it funny that these verses that they go to to try and say, you know, this is how I know I have faith. This is how I know I'm saved would actually condemn them because it's saying if you're a good tree and you're saved, then you shouldn't have any bad fruit. But we all have bad fruit. So that's not going to comfort them there. Um, so how do we understand this passage then? Um, what, what, what is the, the right interpretation of this passage to line up what we see in the rest of the Bible, that salvation is by faith, and that works are not a good way to determine whether or not we have faith? Well, if we're talking about the straight and the narrow way in verse 13 and verse 14, remember what Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the way is not necessarily a path that you walk in order to get to the gate. The way is Jesus. So if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And then he said, you know, I am the door, right? If any man enter in by me, he shall be saved. So we're going by him, by the way, by the door, and a gate is another door, isn't it? So it's straight and narrow, straight, S-T-R-A-I-T, meaning that there's, there's not many options, like it's, uh, you know, it's, it's narrow, um, not straight as in uh, not crooked. So the gate is straight and the, and the way is narrow because there's only one way to be saved and that's through Jesus Christ. So that's how we understand that. Now, when it talks about the good trees and the bad trees, again, it's the context of false prophets. But we could still take that, that principle and say, well, yeah, okay, a good tree will bring forth good fruit and a bad tree will bring forth bad fruit. So how do we understand that in the context of a believer? Well, again, it's, it's, a, it's a, a comparison between the old man and the new man. Because I believe in us, we have both the bad tree, which is the flesh, and we have a good tree, which is the spirit. And if we walk in the Spirit, we'll have the fruit of the Spirit, we'll bring forth good fruit. But if we walk in the flesh, we'll have the works of the flesh and we'll bring forth bad fruit. So this is true in the sense that a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, but a Christian brings forth evil fruit because they have both the good tree and the bad tree. They have those two natures. But a false prophet doesn't have the true nature and a false prophet is reprobate. Uh, or in this, in this passage, a false prophet is reprobate. That's why he will only ever be a bad tree. Um, now, fruit as well in the Bible is not only your works. I mean, fruit can also be the things that you say. Uh, let me show you here in Hebrews um, 13, 15. It says here, By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Um, there's another thing. I won't turn there for sake of time, but if you actually compare the um, in Luke, I believe, with the, 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 the Matthew 7 chapter where he says a good tree cannot bring forth good fruit and an evil tree cannot bring forth... Um, oh, I'm getting that mixed up, but you know what I mean. So the good tree has to bring forth good fruit, a bad tree will bring forth bad fruit. When you look at that parable in Luke... And I'll just find it quickly because I want to show you guys. I wasn't planning to turn there, but um, I just want to show you guys. Let me just find it quickly. In Luke. Yeah. So I think this is a parable. I, I'm not 100% sure if Jesus is preaching this at the exact same time or it's another sermon, but preaching on the same topics. But look here, it says, For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good... Oh, yeah. So th there's, that, there's that passage there, right, that we saw in Matthew 7 talking about the good tree and the bad tree, bringing forth good fruit and evil fruit. So we see that same thing there in Luke 6, 43 and 44. But look at what he says in verse 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. So I think it's interesting there that it puts that same parable of the good tree and the bad tree bringing forth good fruit, bringing forth evil fruit, and then exactly afterward, it's talking about the things that you say. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil from the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. So in Matthew 7, is it talking about our works? You know, possibly, maybe not. Is it talking about our converts, you know, our, our, the fruit that we win to Christ? I mean, that, that, that's one way you can interpret Matthew 7, because you could say, you know, you know a false prophet by his disciples. If his disciples are, are, are devils or, you know, uh, these fornicating, you know, unclean false prophets, probably the person that's teaching them, that won them to Christ, is also a false prophet. But I personally believe that the right interpretation of Matthew 7 is the things that we say. So we see in Hebrews, we have fruit of our lips. We see here that, you know, you bring forth good fruit and then right after he says that you'll bring forth good treasure out of the um, treasure of your heart. I didn't plan to go here, but I just wanted to show you one more verse because I thought this would be interesting. Uh, 
in James, I think it's James 2, no, James 3. Remember in James 3, it talks about our speech, right? Be not many masters, for we offend all in speech. It talks about the tongue not being tamed. So the, so the passage here is about what we say, the things that we talk about. But remember what it says here in uh, verse 11 and 12. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? So there's again this talking like saying that our ma the things we say is like a fountain. So we shouldn't bring forth at the same place sweet water and bitter. But look here, can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive trees, either of vine figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and, f and um, fresh. So it's interesting there that the fruit of our mouth sort of lines up with what's saying here. It's saying, you know, you take fruit from one tree that's, you know, olives, and you take fruit from grapes from a vine. So it, it's almost like that same good treasure and evil treasure, good tree, bad tree. The fruit is the words that we, that we say. Anyway, some, something to think about. So I thought that was, um, that was a bit of a rabbit trail, but it, that might be interesting to you. That, that's my take on Matthew 7 with the fruit um, being good fruit and bad fruit. It's the things that they say. And that's why you can know a prophet by their fruit, because it's what they say. Because it doesn't matter how clean they look, they might have the works, right? You know, maybe they have people that are saved that are following them. You know, we see that today, churches that are preaching a false gospel, but there are saved people in that church. You know, like for the ch Catholic church, for example, some Catholics are saved, but what is the Pope and all these bishops and priests preaching? They're all preaching work salvation, preaching that Jesus isn't really the Son of God, that the Bible isn't true. So how do we know them? We don't know them by their cleanliness because a lot of them are clean. A lot of them are living a clean life. Uh, maybe some of even their converts are, pre are, are professing that they believe on Jesus Christ and he's the only saviour. But we know they're a false prophet because of their fruit, because of the, their preaching and their preaching lies, their preaching heresy. That's how we identify these bad trees and these false prophets. Um, not by their works, because often or not, you know, they have good works. I mean, think of the scribes and the Pharisees. They were right. Except your righteousness should exceed the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. So they were righteous people, but that's why Jesus warned them, you'll know them by their fruits, um, by the things that they say. Now, what about this last bit in here that says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works, then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Um, and I missed verse 21, but it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. A couple of things to point out in this passage here is, number one, you know, making Jesus your Lord is not what gets you saved first of all. So just because they're saying, Lord, Lord, I mean, that's not what gets you saved. You need to believe on Jesus Christ as Savior. He says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Well, that sounds like you have to do works in order to enter into heaven. But let's compare this with uh, John 6, verse 38. Jesus says here in John 6, For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So what is the will of God? That everyone that seeth the Son will believe on Him. So we can take that verse in Matthew 7 and understand it, that it's not whosoever does the will of my Father which is in heaven, meaning that we are keeping the works, but that we believe on the Son. But even another way you could interpret this passage is when we believe on Jesus Christ, righteousness is imputed unto us. And that's why God can say that we're doing His will because when we're born again and we don't sin, we are keeping the will of God. And that's how we can understand a lot of other passages too, that we are counted as righteous, not by our works, but by our faith. And that's why we can enter into the kingdom of God by doing the will of, Father, will of the Father, whether or not it's believing on Jesus Christ or whether or not it's doing the works because we do both in Jesus Christ. 
Now many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now we taught, we said that, you know, calling Jesus Lord is not what saves you. It's not making Jesus your Lord that saves you. It is believing on Jesus Christ and making him your saver, savior. And we can see here in this passage that these people that are coming to Jesus, they're not people that called upon the Lord and didn't have the works. They are people that, call, that, that were calling him Lord and were trusting their works to be saved. Because look what happens when they face Jesus. What do they say to the Jesus? They say, have we not prophesied in thy name, verse 22, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Now, if you stood before Jesus and Jesus said to you, why should I let you into heaven? If you're saved, if you're trusting him as your savior, is the first thing, first thing you're going to say is, look at my wonderful works. No, right? The first thing you're going to say is, well, I believed on you. You know, I trusted you as you say, I, I believed on you and your word said that I have everlasting life. Why am I being turned away? But is that what these people are saying? These people aren't saying that. What they're saying is, look at all my works. I've prophesied in thy name. In thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works. So these were people that did make Jesus their Lord, but they didn't make Jesus their Savior. And that's why he's turned them away. So this passage is not talking about your works being an evidence of your faith or, you know, if you can believe and if you don't have works, you don't really believe. Because these are people that were trusting their works, not trusting Jesus Christ. And if we were to take this passage to try and comfort us to say, hey, well, I'm a good tree, it would actually condemn you if you think that good tree is a believer as a whole. Because it says here an evil tree um, will bring forth bad fruit, and a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit.